Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we are continuing our study of the Thessalonian correspondence. We're in chapter four of First Thessalonians. We're going to look at nine through twelve. First Thessalonians chapter four, verses one through twelve, are the 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 primary Christian living section that we find in in all of Paul's letters, with the exception of Galatians, which is a singularity, really, in his in his uh, body of work. Um, but um, it, it is um, it is not a, a, as long in, in a in a in a book like Ephesians or or uh, or uh, Romans. Uh, you know, it, it can make up a, a third or nearly half of the letter. But we have verses one through eleven here, and then he he, re, re, he covers again. Uh, many of his same themes in his goodbye, the long goodbye that he has um, in chapter 5, verses 12 through 28. So the thing that he spends the most time on in this section, chapter 4, verses 1 through 12, more than half of his time, talking about sexual immorality. And we talked about the threat of that and how um, the, the, um, the temptations and the pressures were there in Thessalonica yesterday. He's going to talk about love for each other and, and that love expressed in the way we lead our lives and prepare ourselves to be loving and helpful to others. And he's going to introduce a topic that I'll have to address further in 2 Thessalonians. Uh, but let's read verses 9 through 12. Now as to the love of, of the brethren, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. For indeed you do practice it toward the brethren who are in all Macedonia, but we urge you, brethren, to excel still more, and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life and attend to your own business and work with your own hands, just as we commanded you so that we may behave properly toward outsiders and not be in any need. If we expect that Paul had um, expectations for them, that they be fiery brigands in the marketplace, shaking their fists and, and shouting Jeremiah's about the second coming of the Lord, we're wrong. He wants them to love, to love each other, to love the brethren everywhere, and to love people around them and through that love to communicate the truth. He tells them to make it their ambition to lead a quiet life. In Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and following, he tells Timothy that the congregation at Ephesus needs to be taught to pray for the same thing, um, that we are able to lead a quiet life in dignity and honor, um, and make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands. If, if, if you love everybody and, and you keep your head down and you tend to your own issues and you provide for yourself, you'll be in a perfect place to help others when they need help. And of course, the brethren in Judea are going to need their help soon and, and Paul's going to need their help later on and, and so that help is going to be needed. But that's what he tells them to do. So let's listen quite clearly to this, to new Christians. He says, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to attend to your own business, and work with your own hands. Um, that's huge. He says, you don't need for anybody to teach you how to love each other because God teaches you how to love. How did he do that? Well... What does he call them over and over again? Beloved by God, brethren, beloved by God. God has taught them how to love by loving them. God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God teaches them how to love by loving them. And they have learned to love by love from God by allowing themselves to be loved by God. And by receiving that love and responding to that love, but love is not something that we acquire and accomplish. It's something that we continue to grow in because we'll never be able to achieve the depth of love that God has for us 
but God's love itself creates in us the capacity to love beyond ourselves and what we would be able to, how we would be able to love apart from God's love for us. So it, it makes, I'm going to borrow this word. I was reminded of this word by dear sister Sharon Gillette, who uh, moved uh, to, to uh, Michigan not long ago, the word capacious, which means to open up and expand. Something is expansive. It's been opened up and it can expand out. Capacious. God's love makes us capacious. Our ability to love, he makes that ability, that reservoir of love capacious. Opened up and ever expanding, God makes it that way. And so he urges them to be better at loving each other uh, more, more and more. Okay, we're going to uh, get to his, his addressing of their question next time at the end of chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. And he's going to make as his topic the second coming and what that means for us all the way through chapter 5, verse 11. We'll pick up there next time. Thank you so much for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.